the much anticipated, long awaited Panasonic Lumix GH7 just dropped. And it's been getting a lot of positive feedback. And it's also been getting a little bit of hate. Let's get into it. Intro. I don't care what they bang, I'm ripping Loomis gang. I don't care what they bang, I'm ripping Loomis gang. I don't care what they bang, I'm ripping Loomis gang. I rep a micro for a thirds and full frame. Big cook coming through S5 Mark II. What's going on, shooters, camera nerds, and camera dweebs? This is your favorite Keep It 100 filmmaker slash content creator, Big Cook, coming back at y'all with another video. But before we get started, y'all already know what it is. I gotta give a special shout out to Loomis Gang. What up, Loomis Gang? If you're part of Loomis Gang, go ahead and drop a pound, Loomis Gang, down in the comment section. Show me some love so I can show y'all some love, all right? With that being said, let's get into the video. And man, that Loomis GH7 just dropped and my personal thoughts, it's a true cinema camera and a hybrid body that can also take stills. That's just my take on it. And I know some of you motherfuckers will be like, well, it's in a DSLR body. It's not a cinema camera, but so is the Black Magic Pocket 4K, 6K, 6K Pro, 6K G2, 6K cinema camera, but those are true cinema cameras. But it seems like when it comes to cameras from Lumix, it's always a little bit of extra nitpicking. It's always a little bit of a bigger microscope put on the camera and what's wrong with it and what it can and can't do compared to other camera companies. And that's just my take because anybody that looks at the GH7 with an unbiased eye will say this is a powerhouse camera and probably the best camera for the price in my own opinion and i'm gonna keep it real that's including the s5 uh 2 and the s5 2x the gh7 is a better video camera than both of those cameras you getting better frame rates you getting better codecs you getting better audio. You probably getting better autofocus, better stabilization, if I didn't already say that. But so many of y'all motherfuckers get so hung up on sensor size. And it's only because YouTube and brainwashed most of us to believe in that shit. And don't get me wrong, I'm part of it too. I used to shoot micro four thirds. But since I got rid of my GH5 and my uh Z Cam E2M4, I've been shooting uh full frame. And that's not to say that Micro Four Thirds are bad cameras because I can damn near put a dollar to a donut that if Red dropped the Red Iguana with the same specs as the Lumix GH7, the exact same specs, but substitute Pro Reds Raw for Red Cold Raw. Y'all be flocking in to buy that camera by the boatload or if, they, or if Alexa drop the Alexa Micro with the exact same specs as the Lumix GH7 with a Micro Four Thirds sensor for $6,000. Filmmakers would be like, oh, this is the deal of the century. I guarantee it. But just because it's a Lumix camera, it's, oh, it got a penny weeny Micro Four Thirds sensor. But what is coming out of that sensor? What are filmmakers getting out of those sensors? Because when I watch Micro Four Thirds videos, they have some of the most beautiful imagery out here and it's only the vocal whores who scream that full frame shit now i'm not talking about for photography i'm talking about strictly for video which this camera is probably 70 percent video 30 percent photo if that but in this camera you are getting so many premium cinema features like all of the cinema tools that us loomis users are you know used to by now the open gate, the waveform monitoring, the shutter angle, and then you can even download stuff like false color so you can have false color in camera. Then you get in a true raw codec for this camera. Not a partially debated raw, which I'm gonna speak on that later while that is a big deal for me and why I wouldn't get the camera, but you're getting a true raw codec inside of this camera that might be bigger than black magic raw but has file sizes that's probably smaller 
and it's cinema D and G. Then you might scream, oh, Big Cook, but Michael Porter don't got that much dynamic range. And this is all I'm gonna say, and I'm not saying that this is a better camera, but Cine D tested the Red Komodo X at 12.5 stops of dynamic range with a signal to noise ratio of two. And Gerald tested the GH7 at 11.9 stops at a signal to noise ratio of two, both using the Zyla 21. One camera costs $10,000, one camera is $2,200. But it seems like YouTube loves to downplay anything that Lumix drops. But I guarantee you, like I said, if Red drop the same camera with the same specs, same sensor size and everything for $4,000. It'd be called the camera of the year. Or if Alexa drop the same exact camera for six to $8,000, same sensor size, same specs and everything, the industry would go wild. Whoa! Because it's not the camera, it's the name. It's the name and a lot of people in the industry try to down talk and downplay the Lumix name. But when you look at this camera for what it is, it is a powerhouse videographer slash content creator slash cinematographer camera. You're getting 32-bit float audio. No other camera company's doing that. So we gotta put some respect on the Lumix G87 name. And all of my brothers and sisters out there on Info Trade Block representing that Marco Four Thirds Lumix game, Y'all should be happy that they dropped this camera because this is the happiest that I've been about a GH camera since the GH5. This is the first GH camera because I've been going from the GH Micro Four Thirds line for some years now. But this is the first camera that I looked at and be like, oh, hold on now. That gave me that feeling of when I first went to YouTube and saw that GH5 and those videos release. This is the one. The GH7 is the one. If you got a GH6, it might not be the one because you might still be stuck on, you know, real filmmakers don't use autofocus. I get that. I remember when I was with Lumix before they got phase to tech, that was my go-to. Real filmmakers don't use autofocus. Whole time I'm secretly, come on Lumix, please get this autofocus together because I'd rather have it and not need it, then need it or want it and not have it. But anyway, back to the GH7. You getting a camera with all these video features. I don't think no camera in its price range is touching it because you're getting real true cinema camera features. Then you're getting real mirrorless hybrid camera comforts. You're getting all of the cinema camera codecs. You're getting all of the cinema camera uh tools, filmmaking tools that are in professional uh, cinema cameras. Then you add on top of that, you're getting the mirrorless camera hybrid autofocus. You're getting the mirrorless camera hybrid stabilization that brings convenience to these jobs that cinema cameras don't offer. The only cinema cameras that offer that is maybe something like the Sony Verano. That's 25 bands plus or the fx3 that's four bands plus or the fx30 which is only fifteen hundred dollars but outside of the sony autofocus which you know i think sometimes a lot of people try to overplay or overhype the gh7 is smashing in every other facet and if micro four third sensor size is that much of a big of a deal to you why not just speed boost that bitch now you got the cinema standard super 35 i think that the gh7 is a camera that says okay this is where we at the only other cameras that i can say are touching it is the nikon z8 nikon z9 because those cameras have the same features but those cameras coming in at four thousand dollars and fifty five hundred or five thousand dollars respectively this camera is twenty two hundred dollars and you're getting professional video features, professional top of the line video codecs, and professional top of the line audio solutions. But it's a Panasonic though. So we gotta, gotta push it down. Can't give Panasonic too much shine, but I guarantee you, if Sony dropped this camera, YouTube would have lost his shit. Canon would have dropped this camera, YouTube would have lost his shit a little bit less because they hate on Canon too. But 
YouTube still, oh, this camera's great. Let's say, but both of them were Super 35 cameras. They would have been in nomination for cameras of the year. But because it's a Lumix camera, can't, we can't hype them up. Can't get that too much shine. Quit hating. Then on top of that, you got the Airy Log C, C3 uh, log curve in it. So you're getting a semi airy look straight out of camera if you want it. You're getting all this for $2,200. You can't find a better deal, in my own opinion. And if you don't like Micro Four Thirds, then that's cool. I understand. I don't shoot Micro Four Thirds, and I'm not going to get this camera. And it's not because of its Micro Four Thirds. The only reasons why I'm not getting this camera is because, for one, I don't shoot with multiple lens mounts. If you watch my other videos, I say that shit. I, I only buy Lumix S lenses. I don't even adapt the Canon EF. I don't even buy Sigma lenses. I just buy Lumix S lenses. That's my thing. Not to say it's good, not to say it, it's not. But you can't adapt these lenses that I have to the GH6, uh, GH7 and Micro Four Thirds cameras, at least not yet. And I'm not gonna go out and buy a whole new set of lenses just for one camera. And the second reason why I'm not getting this camera is because I edit in DaVinci. And the raw codec in the GH7 doesn't work in DaVinci. So that would be one of the main reasons why I bought the camera was for the raw codec internally, but I can't use it in DaVinci. If I was Panasonic, what I would say is, man, y'all better sit down and hammer out a deal with Black Magic to where y'all can put some type of code inside of that raw or have it some type of way, get your engineers and your camera dweebs together to figure that shit out to where DaVinci can read the ProRes RAW from out of Lumix cameras, but it won't read it from out of no other cameras since y'all are all part of the Air Mine Alliance. If everybody's bringing something to the table, what is Black Magic bringing to the table? What, RAW externally? Shit, you gotta buy their monitors to do that. So that's still a profit for them. I got a Black Magic video assist, and I like the image coming out of it, but I had to pay for that monitor in order to use that. So y'all holler at them to figure out if y'all can hammer out a way to put some type of code or something inside of that GH7 Pro Rears ball to where it open and play in DaVinci and edit in DaVinci, and then y'all will have a real winner. But outside of that, me looking at this camera, for what it is, it is a powerhouse. It is a motherfucking powerhouse. There's no way around it. Micro Four Thirds users, rejoice. If I was just getting into the game, I would darn show sure look at it, take a serious look at it, and probably get it. Because I really didn't get brainwashed into the full frame shit until YouTube. Nah, full frame, Micro Four Thirds is dead, the penny winnie sensor, bad and low light. But I've made some of my best work with the Lumix GH5 and the Zcam E2 M4, which had small Four Thirds and Micro Four Thirds sensors. Had the most fun shooting with the Lumix GH5, with that great image stabilization, with those small lenses. It didn't feel like a job at all. So the Lumix GH7 gets the Big Cook approval as a powerhouse true cinema camera that also can take good steals. With that being said, one little the Lumix game, you already know what it is, V-Log or no log. But remember, no matter what camera or system you you using, keep learning, keep shooting. But above all, keep having fun with this camera shit. Big cook, gone. Lumix gang.